All right, y'all, strap in. Taking a look at when Europeans tweet about the U.S. and when Americans tweet about Europe. This should be good. Let's jump right in. We're going to take a look at a couple of these uh, from a video. It'll be linked down below so you can watch the whole thing. Browser channel. So as we could see from the first tweet... Now that I live in Europe, I could confidently say that the metric system is overall superior, but Celsius is a garbage scale compared to Fahrenheit. Fight me. <laughs> so I, I will say this. I just said this uh, in a recent video, and I've said this before. I do like Fahrenheit better. I've learned over time to you like how to use Celsius and how to recognize it. So, you know, it's gone from something very abstract and unknown to now i i get it right i guess when it comes to like weather right i'm talking about weather and actually let me come back to that in a second uh celsius is superior when it comes to how it makes sense right a hundred boiling right boiling hot zero freezing that makes sense zero and a hundred being the extremes everything in between being not as extreme it makes perfect sense it's when it comes to weather that i don't like it though right I, it doesn't hit the same because with Fahrenheit, obviously it's weird because on paper you have like, oh, freezing is 32 degrees and then boiling point of water is 212, right? So uh, way more random numbers, but it's weather that it hits different in the best way. Fahrenheit to me is more, it's superior when it comes to weather. And it's probably only because it's what I've grown up with, right? It's what I'm surrounded by. Of course, if I look on my phone or I look uh, on the news or whatever, the weather channel, uh, by default, it's going to show Fahrenheit more. And for weather, it's just better because guess what? That zero to 100 that is supposed to be nice about Celsius, well, that applies to weather for Fahrenheit. I've never said this before in previous videos, but I should have put it like this. A hundred, you know, like you better be inside in the air conditioning because a hundred degrees is extremely hot, dangerously hot, right? Uh, and it's also very possible in almost basically all of the U.S. to have a hundred degree days sometimes in the summer. At the same time, it's also possible in many places to have zero degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. And that's obviously deadly cold, right? Like, you know, it's cold if it's like 20, 25, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. But when it's zero, you ain't going outside that's going to be frostbite material that's very very cold your car's not even going to want to start barely things are just going to not be good when it's that cold i'm, I'm telling you man with, with weather fahrenheit is awesome i'm still going to say i like fahrenheit better for weather celsius it's like it, it doesn't hit the same with weather like oh it's 39 degrees celsius that's really hot like I don't know. It doesn't doesn't hit the same. It's weird. <laughs> and about the first part, yeah, metric is superior. We all know this. I mean, the whole world uses it other than like, what, three countries? Okay, so this tweet supposedly shows Europe versus America. Hashtag ice wars. I didn't know this was a thing. But uh, yeah, Europe on the left and the U.S. on the right. Now, of course, this could vary in the U.S. I'm sure that's not blanket statement, say, Europe here. I'm sure like different drink preferences and standards are probably slightly different throughout different countries in Europe as well. You know, let's take this with a grain of salt. But if that's like the ice you guys use. Yeah, I, at face value, that seems a little bizarre just because I'm used to everything being super iced down in the U.S. Uh, although it's not really weird to me personally, just because I prefer less ice. Uh, now, no ice would be gross, right? That's kind of weird. But uh, I would prefer maybe just to sprinkle more than this Euro style here. Maybe like two or three more ice cubes and that's it. I like having it in there to keep it cold, but I, I don't want it to be dominated by the ice. This on the right is the American standard, sometimes even heavier than that. And I'm not a fan, right? It, it like gets in the way. It, you know that... It, <laughs> Like 70% of the glass is just ice. You're getting so much less, you know, liquid out of it. Uh, it becomes very watered down as well. You know, so whatever you're drinking isn't going to have like the strongest flavor. I agree. We use a little too much ice here, but I'm in the minority when it comes to ice. A lot of people I know who are obviously American, they love like ice, ice, ice. Uh, everywhere. I guess that's the way here. I'm not really sure why either, because it's weird. It really doesn't matter like what time of year it is or anything.
Are people in Europe dehydrated all the time? They are so stingy with water and the cups are so small. I am thirsty just thinking about being in France again. I don't know. I can't really comment on that. Uh, if you would like to weigh in. I mean, drinking water is pretty important. So I feel like everyone on earth has to drink water at some point, right? It's kind of a uh, staple of health. Okay, I feel like this one's going to be very interesting. This is the perfect visual of a European-sized food versus an American-sized food. I try to prep students for this when we go overseas. Now I can just show them this image. Organic, normal apple versus genetically enhanced apple. Okay, let's see the results. Oh my God. Yeah, this has been a theme. Uh, my wife and I are aware of this and talk about this all the time. Dude, sometimes buying food and knowing what to get and all these things are very annoying here in the U.S. This is something we really are slacking on. I don't know why food standards are bad here. Like you'd think like that's kind of the basis of everything. You have to eat and drink to survive, right? <laughs> it's, it's fuel for our bodies. And you also have to be very aware of what you put in your body. Uh, it just kind of makes sense, right? That's how health works. Because there's so much weird like politics and corporate greed and, uh, you know, the FDA and all these weird things, right? I, stuff just goes wrong here. Our food standards are just bad. And, you know, trying to find a real apple, in this case, is hard here. A lot of people just end up buying this crap, and uh, they might not even know how bad it is. They might not even know it's modified. A lot of people just have to just go buy what they need and, and go home and move on, right? And it sucks because over time... Uh, of course, this can be bad. It could be detrimental to your health. Uh, not to mention just weird. Like, look at how big and lumpy that is versus this. Now, I'm going to trust that this picture, you know, is not like super doctored or anything. And, and, you know, maybe we're dealing with different types of apples here. So, again, take this with a grain of salt. But I I'm sure this isn't, you know, too far off from an idea, right? I'm sure most produce in most countries, especially in Europe, right, with some decent standards, uh, is going to be real produce. And here, there is a big push uh, for better produce because uh, you can sometimes find in stores good produce, but it's very, very expensive, which is hilarious that like a real unaltered product would be more expensive than the totally juiced up altered one. But welcome to the U.S., right? Your best bet here in the U.S. is to try and grow your own stuff and or, you know, try and buy from like a local farm or something, right? There is options. It just takes a lot more effort here. And it's kind of frustrating for sure. Gotta love this one. My commute when I lived in Europe versus my commute in America. Sigh. <laughs> Can you guess which one is which? Obviously, bingo. This would be Europe. I wonder where. I'm not sure. But clearly, anywhere in Europe would be different than this. Look at this. And this is a real highway. I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure this might be in Texas because I know in a lot of bigger states, they have big highways. I mean, that's pretty normal here. But I want to say in like outside of Houston, Texas, I think they have this which is one two three four five six and sometimes seven lanes wide on each side uh yeah absolutely crazy and, and full of traffic right <laughs> welcome to the u.s some commutes are are truly horrible right that's like actually a thing when you're looking for a job here that's like half the battles like what's the commute like how long is it you know what roads and highways is it on uh, if you're commuting around Chicago or Los Angeles or something, it's going to be a nightmare. Orders in the U.S. versus Europe. <laughs> well, a lot of borders you just dri drive right through, I've seen in European countries. Like, there's not even anything. You just drive through and it says, welcome to wherever. Uh, I think that's awesome. That's mind-blowing. It's just like driving between states, basically, here in the U.S. But, yeah, once you hit a border with Canada or Mexico here in the U.S., whole different story. This is literally it it's huge it's very dramatic <laughs> kind of freaky right it's like an ominous feeling because remember i used to live on the border of new mexico texas and mexico and uh yeah obviously there's border patrol right 
police and secured guards and just kind of this big deal all the time by the border. It's very bizarre. All right, now this is the second one that's come up about water. You guys will have to fill me in on this because I, I, I don't understand what this obsession with the water is. So this is an American saying they finished six full glasses of water at lunch, looking around, seeing everyone else has hardly finished their first glass while they were in Europe. I'm telling you, Europeans don't just or just don't drink water, and it freaks me out. So what is that about? I mean, you know, maybe they had water and some other drink like wine or beer or soda or juice, right? Like a lot of times if I'm eating out at a restaurant, I'll get a water and like another drink, right? And I'll kind of switch between the two. Like drinking water is big here. I mean, I think that's a good thing. I feel like a lot of Americans drink a lot of water. I guess it's the whole like acting like Europeans don't drink water at all. Am I missing something here? That sounds really weird, right? Is that true? Do you guys not drink water? Okay, this. I've never seen this before. I love looking at practical things when they're way different between different places. A water tower. I never thought to look those up in European countries. Is this true? This is a water tower on the right from Europe and a water tower in the U.S. on the left. Now, I see these all the time. Of course, I'm in the U.S., right? You see water towers. Uh, they're usually something like this, right? They could be different colors, slightly different shapes and sizes, but generally, they're something like this. And especially, I guess, in the Midwest where, you know, of course, I've spent most of my life. It's very, it's like a symbol of here, right? You see that in all these towns. When you're in the countryside, you'll see different towns and it'll be decorated. It'll say like the name of the town or maybe a local school or team or something. So, yeah, I feel like that's kind of like an American icon in certain places. Uh, and I never thought that, of course, that would be a thing everywhere else, too. But this one in Europe looks way different. So I'm wondering if this is legit or not. If it is, whoa. I, I think I'm going to have to look this up real quick. All right, water tower in Europe. Let's see what we find here. Holy smokes. This is actually crazy. I mean, it does pull up weird looking ones like this although a lot of these I, I i don't know if it's just like a clickbaity title or what a lot of these say like why do t water towers exist in the usa but not in europe i mean i feel like they do exist in europe right to some scale maybe not as much as here i mean these are very weird looking to me of course they're way different i, I yeah i i'm just totally like confused by these they're so different they're like structures with like windows and stuff, or at least it looks that way. Maybe it looks that way on purpose. So it doesn't look like ugly like this. Cause some water towers do look ugly here when they're run down and really old. That, that's that got me like super curious now. I Please let me know in the comments if water towers are a thing in a lot of European countries. And if they are, do they look really weird like this? Or not weird, that's the wrong word. Do they look different compared to this American style? I guess you could just tell me that. Okay, now this tweet is freaking mind-blowing. Look at this. This is going to be in U.S. dollars for reference, okay? We have a Big Mac from McDonald's in the U.S. coming in at $5.66. Also, I don't know how old this tweet is. I think it's even more now. Like, it, McDonald's is making the headlines because they're super, they've gotten super expensive here in the U.S. But anyway, that's just entertain this. $5.66. A Big Mac in Denmark is $4.90. So it already comes in cheaper, right? Almost a dollar cheaper. This is the real kicker, though. A McDonald's worker in Denmark makes $22 an hour, gets six weeks of annual vacation, gets a union, gets one year of paid family leave, gets life insurance, and a pension. Holy smokes, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like a top tier, like banging freaking job here in the U.S. Uh, definitely not a McDonald's worker, by the way. I'm talking like you have a really good position at a good company here and you're lucky to get benefits that even near this, right? And yes, that would be benefits here, not standard stuff. You're already seeing the very grim difference here. Uh in America, the same worker gets $9 an hour with no benefits, <laughs> which was, of course, referring to the McDonald's worker. Oh, my God. That is a crazy difference. You know the funny part, right? If you suggested this criteria here, the Danish worker gets, like, in, a, in the U.S., McDonald's would say, and, and basically any big corporation would say, 
oh, we can't afford that, right? We can't afford to do that for everyone. I mean, we're a company. We got to make money, right? Where's the bottom line, you know? <laughs> like, I, I'm just saying, like, they would come up with some corporate way to excuse and, and corporate jargon to say, like, that's not possible, basically, right? But you see that it is possible. McDonald's exists in other countries. They have food that is reasonably priced. It's not like the Big Mac is $30, right? They have food that is competitively priced. And guess what? The workers have actual standards of employment. They get decent incentive to be a worker there. (laughs) They get a fair wage. I mean, wow. When you see this, it's very frustrating, right? It's very frustrating. Uh, you, You see the very corporate greed obsession here in the u.s and uh man it can it really hit hard when you do some some hard crunching of the numbers Uh, this this one is a big yikes i've been one in the past to to complain about infrastructure here in the u.s it could be very questionable that's putting it very nicely by the way questionable at best uh let's see what the tweet says europeans we can fit cars buses and electric trains on a street built to be just wide enough for two horse drawn carriages in a very dense parts of the city americans you want to put a bus route on this six lane suburban road we're going to need at least two more lanes then <laughs> So it would be a miracle if something like that would ever get passed. And if it does, then it's going to be like a two-year construction project. And, oh, boy, it's a mess. Now, granted, I know road construction could be a mess anywhere. I'm sure there's been some nightmare stories and long times for stuff to get done and stuff throughout Europe. I mean, let's get real. Let's not like act like one is perfect and the other's not. But, I mean, there are many cases where it's pretty impressive. When you see some infrastructure in some different European countries. And, of course, there's some diamonds in the rough here in the U.S. as well. But uh, a lot of parts, the infrastructure is just like, uh, it's not making too much sense here, right? And road construction could be very slow in certain states. Uh, Definitely the one I live in. But, yeah, man, I've been enjoying these videos like this. I think they're really funny and educational at times. And. And some funny insights to, you know, life in different places. Like I said, I hope you enjoyed this or got a laugh out of it. At the end of the day, we all go to sleep and wake up on the same planet, right? Differences and similarities aside. But that's going to be it for this one. My name is Ian. You watch the 9W Rocker. Until next time, y'all. Catch you later.